Hey guys, Henning and Morgan from Flip Normals here. In this vid video, we are going to be looking at how we can make custom VDMs for ZBrush or vector displacement brushes. For those of you who don't know what we're actually talking about here, <laughs> let us show you real quick. This is a custom VDM where you can have a bunch of 3D brushes, which allows you to very quickly drag and drop them onto your model. Yeah. Like this little fish eye. The difference between a VDM and a 2D brush or an alpha is that this has real depth to it. It doesn't just go up and down, it actually goes out as well. So you can make this super cool stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, so now you can get overhangs, which is traditionally not possible with regular displacement brushes. So you can see instead of just in and out, it also goes in, in and out, out. I don't know how to describe it. It creates an overhang. Great That's... explanation. <laughs> I think the eyes were, were a good example of that, where you can see the actual cavity sort of like going into the eye there. So before we get into how to do this, we want to just quickly talk to you about uh, a product we have where we've made this. Yeah, so we have, uh, we've created uh, our own creature kit where, I don't know how many, hundred and something brushes. 172 <laughs> brushes I think it contains. Yeah, so these contain, this is actually the kit that we're showing you in the video. And it's, the reason we made it is just to make concepting easier. Like you can drag and drop eyes, noses, uh, mouths, horns, uh, different kinds of scarring. So it's a really quick tool to help you sort of like concept even faster in ZBrush. Like I think I sculpted this in like an hour and a half where mm. you see the horns drag and drop, the, no the nose, the mouth is just straight up drag and drop into it. Yeah, and then you can just modify it a little bit and now all of a sudden you have a lot of variation on your sculpts. Also, quick heads up, we have a new website up and going. Yay, so uh, if, uh, you know, if you're looking for some assets or tutorials or if you have assets or tutorials you want to sell yourself, pop over to flipnormals.com and check it out. And now back to ZBrush. So we are going to be looking at how to create this from scratch. The main way we're going to be doing this is using just a plain 3D. So select a plain 3D, then we we'll convert this to polymesh 3D. And what's important when you're making these brushes is that you don't go too high res. It's very easy to make these brushes where you're talking like 10 million polys to get all the detail in here. Yeah. That's not what this is for. This is generally something where you, you know, you want some quick shapes out or you just want to get something more repetitive. The reason you really don't want to do 10 million polys is that your file would become humongous. Yeah, the difference between a VDM and a regular displacement or an alpha and ZBrush is that the alpha, the resolution of the alpha, it's pure, purely an image. Mm. So the higher resolution your plane is, the smoother your gradients are going to become. But with the VDMs, they're actually meshes stored within your brush. So, you know, if you have 10 million times 10, that's a big file. Yeah, and if you have a kit which has 172 brushes, <laughs> you know, you're in, in for a world of pain when it yeah. comes to that. Another important note is to disregard everything it says on the Pixelogic help <laughs> section of how to create these. Um, this was something that we struggled with for weeks Yeah. Uh, because everything they tell you to do actually makes the brush worse. Yeah, if there are some very specific things here which really, really sabotages what it is you're trying to do, which is, um, let's see if we can find it in ZBrush. If the docs tells you to use this feature, relax playing grid, don't do it. <laughs> I, uh, when I made, uh, when we made um, the creature kit, this was a real pain in the ass because we had so many artifacts around the shape. So when we were dragging something like this out, it was like beautiful. Uh, you <laughs> could see you had there was so many things around it, so many artifacts. Yeah. And we just couldn't figure out how, why it wasn't clean enough. And that was because we followed the official docs. So we're going to be showing you a pretty simple way of, of making brushes. This should be the de facto way of how to create VDMs in ZBrush yeah. that are perfect. Yeah. So just start subdividing. And now you're like, oh, whoa. The corners are smooth off. It's not a problem at all. We thought it was would be an issue, yeah. but it really doesn't pose any problems whatsoever. So I personally prefer to subdivide it up to around 260. You don't really want to go over that because the um, the amount of details you can capture it becomes more like more negligible, and also it becomes really heavy as you go along. Yeah. So important regular plane and just subdivide it normally. Control D, and then we store a morph target. This isn't strictly speaking necessary. This is more so that if you're 
sculpting on, on your brush and now you accidentally hit the border of it, you know, just a little thing like this, this is going to give you issues. Yeah. So now we can use the morph brush by hitting B, M, O, and now we can just paint it out. So it's just a security in case something goes wrong. You can also mask out the borders as well in case you want to. You can make polygroups for it. Yeah. You can hit control, control W to make polygroups for it if you want to. So then you can very quickly just control click the polygroup you want afterwards with um, one of the, the transpose or the new gizmo live. But we don't have to do that because we're hopefully not going to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is make a mask for the center. Uh, we're going to make a little horn for this because that shows it quite well and it's quite easy to do. You want to use as much of the space as possible because if you if you just use a tiny region in the center, you aren't utilizing the polygons at all. No. And then you'll just have a large file for no reason. Yeah. So we are going to go under Tool, Display Properties, and do Double so we can actually see what's going on. Also, as a general rule, disable perspective when doing this. This becomes important later on. So now we can use the beautiful gizmo tool to drag something up. I recommend that you smooth this out by hand just as you go along whenever you're making this. Yeah, and not use the relaxed relax plane to grid feature yeah. under deformation. Yeah, then you're in a lot of pain and you don't know why. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a great idea because it distributes all the polygons evenly yeah. uh, across your mesh, which, you know, like I, I felt like that was a great idea. Yeah. But for, for VDMs, for some reason, that just breaks them. It's um, it's one of those things that is like it takes it takes a little while to create these brushes, but you know at the end you're left with some really really cool assets that can really speed up your workflow. So I think it's something that everyone who does any sort of creatures or organic stuff should really do. I mean, there's also in the pack that we sell we have stuff for for people as well. So. We try to include some cheekbones, some chins, noses and mouths as well. So it can even be used for, for getting variation in, in people. Like if you don't want to just have generic face with generic nose, you can experiment a lot with that. Yeah, I personally used to create chicken quite a lot for a lot of my concepting. Uh, it was it was something we, we used a lot when we worked on Pacific Rim, just to yeah. get massive kaijus, because you just had to very quickly just get out quick designs for a bunch of different things. So by having a base mesh ready and by having some some de default brushes or stuff like a mouth, a nose, eyes, ears, particularly horns as well. Oh, horns, horns take ages to sculpt. Yeah. And there isn't that much variation when it comes to horns either. Sure, you have you have like the difference between like deer antlers and mm. you know your basic zebra demon kind of thing but it's all it's all based on the same thing so if you have five different kind of horns you're pretty much set one thing i like to do is i like to experiment with them in the kid in a way that they aren't designed for mm. so i've made wings with the horns <laughs> So uh, you can see this once you start to experiment with symmetry. The vector displacement brushes aren't really designed to work in the center of things when symmetry is turned on. Yeah. So that becomes a really, really interesting thing because uh, you can just drag these out and just to extremes. You don't have, just because it's an eye, it doesn't have to be an eye. You can invert it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and like with the horns, they can become these giant gouges inside of their bodies yeah. as well. And so there's, there's just a, a lot of room for experimentation when you have a kit like this, just because you're not really restricted to, okay, let me just try and make this. Maybe this will be okay. This is an excellent way for you to just exaggerate what you're doing. Yeah. So now we have our beautiful sculpt done. I'm just gonna go over the borders just to make sure I didn't accidentally hit something with the morph brush. You should be fine. Otherwise, this will this will always oh, oh a little one, a little down. <laughs> this is also going to show up once you actually capture the brush and you try yeah. to use it. So yeah, we're going to get pretty immediate feedback if yeah. you screwed something up. So when you need to capture the brush, you have to snap it so it's facing the camera like this, and you also have to disable perspective because it doesn't capture the model per se. It captures depth information. It captures it at this location or at this this angle. And then we use the layer brush. You can also use, oh, nice little 
thing nice from before. Test there. <laughs> nice little test. You can also use the standard brush, but it's it's. Um, I find I get um, better results if you use the layer brush, and yeah. there's less setup as well. Before you do anything, you also want to duplicate the brush. Does it clone? Because now you're overriding the original brush, which you really don't want to do. If you already have something here, like we have a little cheeky guy, then we can go under brush and create and hit delete mesh, and that sets us back. You're gonna do this a lot when you're making brushes because <laughs> you're gonna experiment with the shape and make new brushes. Yeah. And now we can hit create mesh or from mesh, and now you can see we have a little guy up here. What we have to do now as well is make sure the intensity is set all the way to 100. By default, if it's set to something like 20, you're not gonna get the full effect of it. And then we can see if what we did worked. Make sure it's selected. Oh, and also make sure this is set to drag rect as well. If it's set to drag strokes, you're gonna get something like this. <laughs> Perfect, which can also, you know, you can experiment yeah, with that. Yeah, absolutely, and you can experiment with the, the spacing. Yeah. So, so drag rect, and there we go. Perfect so, seaburst demon horns. Perfect seaburst demon horns. This is why this is why it's so cool because now you can just experiment with this very quickly and get really interesting results. And you can do a sculpt only made out of horns. Yeah. It's eyes, are horns, eyebrows, are horns. The interesting thing is like the more you drag it, then all of a sudden it's going to drag through the other side of the model, and then you can start to dynamesh things and you know really experiment with this. You can have a lot of fun with this. So I mean, obviously it's a bit cartoony example here, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, you can see that you can do something really quickly. And this was this was a pretty shitty horn. I mean, this was very rough stuff, no reference used, just getting something up and running. Yeah. But if you spend proper time with this and make really refined shapes, you can make something really good. As a quick note, now we are using morph targets on this. Um, uh, we're using morph targets on the plane we're using to create it. You really don't want to use morph targets on the model you're sculpting. So let us show you an, an example here. If we have a morph target on this guy, and now we we want to we want to have another stroke on this, it doesn't work. It's not. It's going to completely screw up what we're doing. If we say an eye now, you see it 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 goes into it and tries to go back to the original shape. So right now we want the eye here to not go into it. We want to go on top. It doesn't work with a morph target. So this is what we want. Yeah. We want to go on it. So whenever you're sculpting, make sure your model doesn't have a morph target. Also, one cool thing is that, let's say you have a bunch of these. This is how we made a creature kit. We had a bunch of these little things here where you, know, you can scale them down. You can, uh, let's do this, we can move it down here and we can just scale it down. So now you have a different horn all, in tar all together. So now if you want both of these to be in the same brush, we can go to our uh, layer brush, what we had before. We can delete whatever is here. This is how I used to do it. I would just straight up just delete all the delete all the brushes and then make them again. I would have the subtools over here for all the different shapes. Brush, then under brush again, create multi alpha brush. And now you see we have both of them here. So whenever you're sculpting and you're making these kits or whatever you're doing, you can just have a single tool with multiple subtools and just keep refining them. And when you change, you want to change your brush, you just delete the brush from up here and uh, you start again. So now we can you know, drag out a small one and we can drag out a big one. And suddenly you have even more variation of what you want to do. Let's see if we can show an example why you also shouldn't use the pixel logic approach to this. So. Yeah, I don't know why they, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird that it's there. I, when it's so wrong. Um, for some reason, uh, even though the plane to grid, plane grid, fixed grid, whatever on the deformation doesn't really, it doesn't seem like it, it touches the borders, something definitely changes there. And so once you start to drag it out, it just, it just looks weird. So what they're saying to do is that you should mask out the borders and then you should use under tool, a deformation, you should use relax, plane to grid. But what it's doing, you can see it distributes the polys way better, better. Which is a great idea. Which is a great idea. Because this way you can optimize, you know, the polygons that you have for your uh, VDM. Yeah. But what happens if we again go to layer, again, f f facing the camera, and then we go to brush and we hit from mesh and just make sure it's selected up here. We are going to see some pretty nasty stuff. You see this? You see the issue around this? 
this was something we struggled with for, <laughs> for like a week or two. It was a real, real pain in us to figure out why this happened. So don't do that. Yeah. Very simple. Make a plane, subdivide it up, no perspective, sculpt to your heart's content, brush, from mesh. So very nice and easy. And then you can, let's just show you a quick one minute demo on what you can do with this if you if you want to have some fun. We can make, uh, give this guy some horse ears. Beautiful. We can give him, give him a little skeleton nose. Then we just disable symmetry. We can enable symmetry again. We can give him. So. Yeah, like we told you, because like symmetry and the vector displacement brushes, they act weirdly together. Yeah, so we, we can add some anatomy stuff. Like we have some, uh, you have a cheekbone. Like this. And then we can add maybe the eye again. Oh, this guy has polygroups. Delete polygroups. Oh, delete morph target. targets. We can get this in here. So now we have some, some bone structure for him. Let's add a little mouth to him here. Again, disable symmetry. Oh, so cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> With his scully little mouth, a nose. And then we can add some fur to it. And then, you know, you're talking within seconds, you can have a version of this. Yeah, exactly. And then you just, you know, now you have a base to sculpt on and now you can just refine the shapes or you can start tweaking the proportions. You can go back a few steps at different kinds of eyes more horns and and this way it's really easy and really quick to to build up very interesting looking concept and then you can you know start to sculpt by hand yeah but the cool thing about this you can you can build up so many different ideas without ever actually sculpting yeah just straight up just by doing it so i i, I highly recommend that you you spend some time to make cool brushes for your own personal projects because uh, you can make some really cool designs particularly if you're a concept artist and you don't really care about the whole let's become let's train to become a good sculptor you just want really quick designs out this is a phenomenal way yeah. of building really cool uh, brushes right away and it works for environments and everything yeah, you can yeah. do rocks trees whatever all sorts of stuff so we hope this here has been been useful and let us know if you want to see anything more in zbrush or if you want to see more content like this in the future make sure to like comment and hit the notification button to and get. subscribe also subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks, guys.